If we look at the typical enterprise architecture, we see a lot of connectivity going from data centers, from branches, from different headquarters, going over private connectivity and PLS into a central point where you have all the major applications running that we, that we see in, in an enterprise environment. And then from there on out, they go into public clouds or they go to the internet. Now that becomes more and more of a choke point. And so we see more and more customers and enterprises migrating into a SD1 type of solution. That means that from on-premise, we're going to have not one, but also multiple types of connectivities. So from on-premise, you'll be able to connect over an MPLS, for example, into Microsoft Azure in AWS Google Cloud. Um, we're going to have direct connectivity over the internet to SaaS type of solutions like Office 365. Now, we can even go further therein and using our SD1 solution within the 40 gate from an on-premise location, we can connect over MPLS as well as over IPsec and then terminate the connectivity of both on the 40 gates that we deploy within uh, Microsoft Azure. And then we can start selecting based on latency jitter or packet loss, how the traffic needs to go. To give you an example, from an on-premise location, connect directly over MPLS for low latency to a remote desktop service. However, a backup, for example, could go over IPsec because latency is less of an issue there. Um, if there is a little bit of delay, it doesn't matter for that backup. It can take a few minutes longer. It's not that big of a deal. But the cost savings, on the other hand, are uh, certainly substantial. The MPLS doesn't need to be upgraded for large amount of data transfer and so on. But also, business applications can be load balanced across them to optimize the bandwidth. And of course, direct connectivity from that on-premise location into the, the SaaS type of applications or the internet is also critical, of course. So, moreover, Customers that have multiple internet connectivities on-premise and want to get rid of MPLS or do not even have MPLS, we can use multiple internet connections to connect again into the 40 gates in public cloud. That means that, again, based on the, the types of lines, based on the latency jitter and packet loss, we can start detecting which is the best line for which traffic and connect accordingly. So for this demo, we've set up a on-premise location where we have an internal network with a virtual machine that goes over the 40 gate on-premise over an IPsec connection into a high available setup in Microsoft Azure. Secondly, we've set up express route going from a DMZ where we have a router from our provider going into the Azure v uh, VPN or express route gateway and connectivity is ensured across that. So if this VM with the dot 10 wants to connect to the internet, it needs to pass the 40 gate. And in the 40 gate, we will have SD1 um, rules. And based on those rules, we will select whether the traffic passes over the IPsec VPN into the 40 gate to the VM, and then back through the internal load balancer from Microsoft into the active 40 gate back over the IPsec VPN tunnel to on-premise, or if we select that traffic needs to go over express route, then again, we will go from the VM over the 40 gate over express route to the VPN gateway. And then you'll see we will arrive here on the local internal port over the um, internal lo load balancer and then going to the virtual machine. Moving on to our demo. So we're going to try and connect from the VM with the dot 10 to the dot 4 in Microsoft Azure. So we've connected here two times over SSH to this VM system, and we're now going to connect over two different protocols, SSH on the one hand and port 80 HTTP on the other side. So SSH, we're connecting in, we're into that server. Again, port 80, I'm just going to browse to the Nginx website that we have there. So here again, Nginx wishes us welcome. So this is the a ba a very basic setup of the VM with on both sides two protocols, one here SSH, one here port 80 HTTP. So now the question is, 
which line do we take over the IPsec or the express route? So let's go here into our, uh, on, into our logs. So we have two connections. So here we can see the port 80 traffic going from the LAN over the one port. So that goes through express route for HTTP. So that's good. And then secondly, we have a connection again from the LAN with the 248.10. We're going to the dot four here. And here we go over the IPsec tunnel. So here we see the VPN tunnel is called ROS0 um, because this box is called like that. And we have our, um, our policy here. So that's fine. And does that reflect back into our SD1 settings? So here you can see we have our interface members. So our one, the internet, as well as the IPsec tunnel so that we can also load balance other traffic. As a minimum, you would have the one interface and the IPsec interface, of course, but in general, you'll see also the internet taking part here. And then we have our run rules. So I've created two rules with a basic setup for this demo. So from the LAN to Azure, port 80, and I've forced it manually now over the one. In case that, that express ride is not available, it will fail over to the IPsec tunnel. Similarly, if we look at SSH from the LAN to Azure port 22, we do it manually and we've set it up over the IPsec tunnel. And that is in, indeed what we've seen. If you want to try this out yourself, I want to direct you here to Fortinet GitHub. So we have github.com slash Fortinet and then slash Azure templates, and you'll find all the FortiGate deployed uh, deployment options. So for this setup, what we used is this v VNet peering setup. That is a setup where we have the active passive cluster with load balancers on both sides. We have sync and management networks. We have the protected network, and we can even have separate VP VNet spokes that can also connect over this cluster into the on-premise network. To get started deploying this, just go here. If you like the, the Azure portal, just click here, deploy to Azure, and you'll, you'll get asked four questions for a prefix for all the naming, a location, which region you want to deploy, a username and password. If you want, you can also adapt all the other variables like the, the IP addressing schemes, uh, the VNets, if you already have a VNet and then inject that into your, into your configuration. All of that is possible going through the Azure portal. Or secondly, you can just use the Azure Cloud Shell and use Azure CLI. Just cut, copy, paste this one line into your Cloud Shell and you'll be asked again those four questions to get everything deployed. If you want to adapt the templates, that is fine as well. They are, the source is all available here. So you can uh, review that and start deploying and adapting on your own. With that, thank you very much. Have a nice day.